we had a visitor from outer space. That is, we have had a human being who has left the earth, gone out into space way beyond where our space shots have reached, and has actually come back to tell us what is out there. Muhammad hasn't done that. Buddha hasn't done it. Confucius hasn't. Zoroaster hasn't. They all died like ordinary men. But this man died, apparently like an ordinary man, and then left the earth. And three days later came back and lived for over a month and ate and slept with his friends in such a way that they knew that he was not a ghost but was actually a whole human being. That's the man that can tell us what this world is about and what the purpose of our lives is and why we are alive and what the meaning of life is. And therefore it's very important that we know that that man really did exist. One of the reasons we can be so sure that he existed is because of the reliability of the historians who wrote about him in the first century. They were men who have made an impression of honesty and integrity on all generations. They were men who died for the very thing they wrote about. So much did they believe in it. They were men who were surrounded by other eyewitnesses who read their accounts of the events of this man's life and therefore could contradict it if it had been wrong. But the question that we're dealing with is, can we be sure that what we have is what they wrote? In other words, if this man is Jesus and the men that wrote about him are people like Peter and John and Mark and Paul, can we be sure that what we have in our Bible is what they wrote? That's one of the difficulties we have with Caesar's Gallic Wars. Caesar wrote the Gallic Wars, the history of the Gallic Wars, about 50 B.C., but the earliest manuscript we have of those Gallic Wars is 900 AD. That's about a thousand years later. Now, anybody could have changed that original manuscript and substituted theirs for it. In fact, 10 or 12 or 20 people could have done it over a period of a thousand years. That's what enables a myth to be created, the passage of time. How can we be sure that we have in our Bible what they actually wrote? Well, there are two important factors that influence the reliability of the transmission of any history. One is the age of the manuscript. The nearer you can get to the original writing, the more likely you are to have exactly what they wrote. So even though Plato wrote his Republic in 400 BC, the nearest we can get to his manuscript is one that we have, 900 A.D. That's 1,300 years after he wrote the manuscript. That's a long time. So one of the important factors in being sure that you have what the original writers wrote is the age of the manuscript that you have in your possession. What is the most ancient manuscript that you can find of this history? The other factor is the number of manuscripts. Because say there's a mistake in one manuscript, well, if you have three manuscripts, then you can compare one against the other too. But if you have 25 manuscripts, you can compare one against the other 24. If you have a 1,000 manuscripts, you can compare one against the other 1,000. And so you have a better chance of being able to eliminate any mistakes that the copyist made in copying from one manuscript to another, which was the habit, of course, of the ancient scribes because of the lack of durability in the material that they used to write on. Well, you can see that in the ancient writers like Plato and Caesar and uh, Pliny and Livy and Thucydides, you're rather limited. Usually, your most ancient manuscript is at least a thousand years later than the original writing. And usually you're dealing with not more than seven manuscripts in the case of Plato's Republic, or at the most 20 in the case of Livy's history. So you're usually dealing with a relatively few manuscripts and relatively late manuscripts, usually a thousand years after the person actually wrote the book. And yet we don't question 
that when we read Plato or Tacitus or Caesar or Livy or Pliny or Thucydides or Lucretius or Euripides or Aristotle, we are reading exactly what they wrote. We don't question that 7 to 20 manuscripts is good enough for us. And even if there are a thousand years after the book was originally written, yet we can be sure that what we have is what they wrote. What is the situation with the New Testament? Is it as good as that? It is beyond that, beyond that in every way. How many manuscripts do we have of the New Testament? We have 4,000, over 4,000 ancient Greek manuscripts. That is, manuscripts that were written before 1,000 A.D., we have over 4,000 of them, so that if there's a mistake in one, we can compare it against 3,999 others. We have a magnificent opportunity to be sure that almost every dot and every comma, almost the spelling of every word, is exactly the way Mark originally wrote it, or Luke originally wrote it, or Matthew, or Paul, or John, or James. But what is the age of these manuscripts? Are they as near as, say, Livy's manuscript is to his writing, maybe a thousand years, or as Plato's is to his, maybe 1,200 years? What is the oldest manuscript we have of the New Testament? Believe it or not, if you go to the Manchester University Library, you will find part of the Gospel of John that is dated, and hold your breath, not a thousand years after John wrote the book, not 900 years, not 800 years like Pliny, not 800 years like Suetonius, not 1,500 years like Euripides, not even 400 years, not 300 years, not 200 years, 130 years after John wrote the gospel, historical record of Jesus' life, we have a piece of manuscript in the University Library at Manchester, dated 130 AD. Do we have any others? Yes. If you go to the British Museum, on one side you'll see the Codex Alexandrinus, on the other side you'll see the Codex Sinaiticus, manuscripts that are dated about 350 and 400 AD. A bare 350 or 400 years after the New Testament was written. And we have 4,000 other manuscripts of similar age to reinforce in us the conviction that when we read the New Testament account of Jesus' life, we are reading what the first century eyewitnesses actually wrote. Indeed, if you reject the manuscript evidence for the New Testament, you have to reject belief in Julius Caesar, in Plato, in Suetonius, in Homer, in any of the great leaders of the past. You have to say that black is white. You have to say that history does not exist. You have to do that if you reject the reliability of the New Testament history of Jesus' life. It is surpassing every other history of those days. It is more reliable than any other history of an ancient figure. It is reinforced not only by the reliability of the original writers, but it is reinforced a thousandfold by the exceptional manuscript evidence that we have. We have over 4,000 ancient manuscripts, of which the earliest is a bare 25 to 30 years after John wrote the first historical record called the Gospel of John. Can you believe that Jesus is a historical figure? If you don't believe he's an historical figure, you don't believe in history. His historicity is more clearly established than that of any other figure of, its, of his time. Yes, Jesus lived and spoke and died and got up from being dead in the same way that history said he 